G'day, my name is Benjamin Carlyle, I'm a software engineer, I'm a systems engineer, and today we're going to be playing with electronic circuits. A little while ago, I got onto AliExpress and bought myself 20 NE555 timers for 67 cents and thought I'd have a play with them. This is a mini breadboard, and here is my chip. This is the NE555P, which is a Texas Instruments chip. I was wanting to put this into the most commonly used configuration on hobbyist sort of websites, which is just to make a simple LED flasher. When I say the 545 timer is a timer, it's actually a little bit inaccurate. It is a device that's able to use the timing of a capacitor of its discharge and charging cycle to measure time. So there are two very common uses for this device. One is to wait for an event coming in and then wait a short amount of time after that event has occurred before it produces its own output. So it's often used in locking devices or various other things that need an event to occur, some time to have passed and then for another event to be triggered. It can be used in that mode or it can be used in this mode that we are going to use today, which is flashing just on its own or triggering itself to have an event. And we're going to be following the circuit diagram from the relevant data sheet. And it's described as a stable operation. So we're going to be doing an a stable operation circuit. So what we have on this circuit is the chip for the most part. We've got a few resistors and we've got the capacitor. The main working component is this capacitor right here, which is connected to ground and this trigger and threshold. What we've got is these two resistors here, resistor A and resistor B, and the capacitor work together to determine the timing of the circuit. When the capacitor is filling up, the electrical conductivity needs to pass through RA and RB in order to fill the capacitor. And in order to discharge, it will go through this resistor B. And so the combination of resistor A, resistor B and capacitor values will determine the actual timing of the device. There's a little bit more to the circuit. There's a capacitor up here which just attaches from VCC to ground, and that just gives it some extra timing stability. We've got an open connection on pin five, and we need to pull the reset pin high to avoid it resetting when we don't want it to. And we need ground and power for the device. Here we have the actual load. So we're gonna use our LED with a current limiting resistor, and we're gonna take the output of the device. We're gonna take an output of the NE555, and we're going to take that to VCC in order to power the load. So this is a nice simple circuit and we've got a nice simple breadboard. So the first thing we really need to have is the actual timing capacitor in this case. So we'll attach this timing capacitor to the earth. We know earth is gonna be on pin one because that is the ground pin of the chip. So another thing we know is that pin four, which is the reset pin, is going to be up VCC. Pin three is our output pin. So what we'll do is we'll connect the output as if it is the ground to a resistor. That will bridge across into a separate part of this breadboard. I'm sure I'll get this wrong. And I'll just connect that back to pin four, which we know we're gonna be pulling high up to VCC. So that is the load component and you can replace this load component with any load you see fit to use. The next thing we might do is start to fit the uh, resistors that control the rate at which the capacitor charges and discharges. So the style of a variable resistor that I've picked out is just this three pin type resistor. I'm using a 50 kilo ohm uh, resistor maximum. Those are going to become resistor A and resistor B in our circuit. The key thing to note is that they have a middle pin, which is the tap and left and right, which will be the variable resistances between these two corners. So across here to here and here to here. So those are the variable parts. So we actually, the straightforward way to deal with this on the breadboard is just to tap into the center. We'll tap right underneath these two resistors. So what I'm gonna do is connect the uh, pin two, in this case, to the opposite side of our capacitor to ground. And what that has done is put the capacitor now between pin two and the ground pin. So that puts the capacitor into that circuit between the ground pin and pin two, and that's our timing capacitor. We also need to take the next step, which is going to link the two resistors, which we'll place over the top, this blue here. In we go. So we'll place one resistor here 
over the top of this tap here. So that resistor now will connect its center tap on this capacitor. So that is our resistor V. So if we take this diagram here, we're connecting the point which is connected to pin 2 and the capacitor to this variable resistor. Now the next point we need is resistor A, so we'll pop that in next to it. And again, we're going to use the center tap on that to be the point at which that blue wire connects. So already we have resistor A, resistor B, the timing capacitor all connected as they should be. So the next thing I'm going to do is plant a 0.01 microfarad capacitor between VCC and Earth. And we can do that up off this top pin here, pin A, because that is a VCC pin. So we're going to put a ground over here and we're going to put a capacitor in between. And that is the core circuit, the actual bits that we can easily put into straight lines on this breadboard configuration. We are going to need some loopy connectors to jump across the chip. So what we're going to do is connect pin 6 to pin 2. And we're also going to connect the center pin of resistor A down here, right over the chip, to pin 7. So those are not the tidiest things. That's about as short as I've got handy wires to do. But those connect the all important trigger to threshold. And pin seven is the discharge pin. The chip will allow the capacitor to discharge through this resistor. The next part is just connecting VCC and ground. So obviously we're gonna to need to have VCC on this reset pin that we already noted was something we needed to connect for our load. Uh, we can connect it either here at the pin itself or here where we've jumped across. So I'll just do it there. The next place we want VCC is obviously the VCC pin of the chip, pin eight, which is also where we have this earth to VCC stability capacitor here. We need a third VCC connector to this left leg. So those are our three VCC connectors, but we also need two earth connectors just down to the earth pin here, which is pin one in here. And the last place we need an earth is on this stability capacitor. So there are a few little dangly bits that we have to deal with, but that is the circuit. I'm using five volts here. A variety of voltages will work fine. Just be aware of the resistor value on your LED. I am using a 270 ohm resistor on my LED, which I find is enough. So I just use it without doing too much thinking and calculation. And if we now power this up, what do we see but a flashing LED. Now that flashing rate is determined again by that capacitor and resistor A and B. So the period and the frequency can be found by these formulas as well as the output driver duty cycle, output waveform duty cycle and low to high ratios. So it all depends on your resistors and capacitor values. The resistors I'm using are 50 kilo ohm variable resistors plus at the moment a one microfarad I think. Here's the, probably the most useful diagram for determining what values you need. This is a pre-calculated set of resistor values that you will need, particularly the sum of the resistor A plus 2V, we're going to be about 10 kilo ohms, and the capacitance of the timing capacitor, 0 0.001 microfarads all the way up to 100 microfarads. This will give you basically the, the timing that you'll get out of it as a frequency from 100,000 times a second down to one time a second or less than one. If we tune those, we can do slightly different values, but obviously these are a bit logarithmic, so you'll actually need to substitute fairly different values if you want the rate to be quite different. But let's do some basic tuning. Let's tune this resistor A. Hopefully you can see some differences in the timing there. I think it's slowing down there. And this is resistor B. You can see that this is quite a lot faster than this. And so you can tune these things to be specific values and you can pre-select resistor values that are appropriate as long as you match that up to the right capacitance. And that is how you build a very simple LED flashing circuit. The short answer is refer to the data sheet. Thanks everyone.